What's going on all of you fantastic freelancers? My name is William, the host of Your Anthem, and today's video is a pretty special one. We have recently gotten a lot of new information courtesy of Christian Daily over on Twitter regarding Anthem 2.0's development, including some sneak peeks behind the hood, some very reassuring details, and so much more. Now, if some of you, if not most of you, are like me, I would have never owned Twitter before if it weren't for the fact that I was a content creator. So I'm willing to bet the vast majority of you haven't seen any of this stuff yet, except for maybe over on my community tab where I post these things on the occasion. But I figured in today's video, we go back and look at all of them all together, including the new concept art pieces, some details on optimization and other cool features that are being worked on right now, and pretty much a buffet of what's been happening happening with Anthem 2.0's development. Now, as a heads up, all of these tweets are coming from Christian Daly over on Twitter. For those of you who don't know who Christian Daly is, he is the new studio head at Bioware Austin, and pretty much Anthem's new game director. He and the Anthem 2.0 team are taking Anthem in a very awesome direction, and while I was out of town, I was absolutely going crazy not being able to make a video for you guys about all of this stuff, keeping you up to date day by day. But hey, I'm back now, so let's get into it. Our first tweet is in regards to a brand new faction that we will be seeing in Anthem 2.0, known as the Pirates of Bloodwind. Christian writes this in response to a user who asked how the development's going, and he says, It's going well. Hopefully we can spotlight some of the focus areas soon. Player autonomy, proper progression, loot slash javelin, endgame, and pirates. What topics would you like to see? Now quickly, let's analyze these pirates. First and foremost, this suit kind of looks like a hybrid javelin. It's definitely armored, it's got a missile launcher on its shoulder, the grenade launcher that maybe we'll be getting. Of course, he's got a pirate's machete, and what's looking to be kind of a World War II inspired grenade in his other hand. Or that could very well be a mace. Now, of course, we're just looking at the grenadier, and obviously with every faction there is going to be more and more variants. Now, I followed that up with pirates, okay. Color me surprised and impress. Similar to the Outlaws or a new faction entirely. You can never fail with a peek on javelins and loot, but I am so <laughs> down for a lore injection at any time. To which Christian said, of course, it's a new faction. They're wyvern taming, drunk ursics wrangling, good times. Now this brings up a ton of new questions with this faction, such as where do they come from? Which is actually an answer that I have and will go over in another video. My biggest thing is, these guys are able to survive outside the walls, and yes, they are armed to the tooth, but they are able to take two enemies, the Wyvern and the Ursix. Admittedly, the Ursix is a bit more of a formidable opponent, but regardless, they're able to tame creatures that typically give us, freelancers, a very hard time. I would need for them to have a pretty good explanation as to how they are able to do that. There are two more art pieces Christian has shared, such as the Scar Strider. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this thing looks terrific and very characteristic of Scars. They are Already mutilate javelins, such as the Ranger and the Colossus, to build their suits of armor for their swarm hive to infest and basically create a human body for. It would have been cool to see these striders walking around or having to fight them, especially these turrets that are mounted on the strider. And you gotta admit, the design is pretty neat, with that giant saw blade in the chest and it being fortified with scrap metal. Now lastly of the concept art before we get into Anthem 2.0 details, we have an image of the Unfathomed aka Anthem's Cthulhu. Now this art was done by Ken Fairclough, who is the lead concept artist over at Bioware Austin on the Anthem team. I'll leave a link in the description below to his art station because he has some very cool stuff in there and things that I have a feeling will be making its way back into Anthem at some point in time. But what would you all have said to a Cthulhu Unfathomed instead of just a mutilated fury? Personally, I could go either way with it. The sunken cell is characteristically defined by Harkin trying to study the Shaper relics and blend it with Dominion technology, and he ended up creating a giant fury. But on the other hand, I would have been totally fine with this Cthulhu fury, as the Anthem does have the power to mutilate and create at will. But anyways, one of my buddies over on Twitter named Scout tweeted to Christian, That's great! 
when will the blog drop? Christian replies, hopefully by the end of the month, really comes down to when we find time to write it. Now apologies if I butcher anybody's name, but this next tweet comes from La Gizur, who asks, will be update about optimization for PC, sorry for my English. In other words, will there be optimizations made for the PC? To which Christian replies, lots of performance work planned for all platforms. Now I've always said that Anthem is a game that was developed way ahead of its time, or at the very least, it released in the wrong console generation. Though even with my PC being 64 gigabytes of RAM, running with an NVIDIA 2080 Ti card, and an Intel Core i9, which for people who aren't PC people, that is the best kind of PC on the market right there, I still have trouble running Anthem. My computer still runs at 100% performance at all times. So it's good to hear that more performance work is being done. Especially with where they're at in development, it's looking like this will be a next-gen release. Or a next-gen update, whatever they have planned. Next up comes from another one of my regulars, Anthema Dex, who asks, Hi, Fort Tarsus fully accessible? Is that planned? Christian replies, What about Fort Tarsus as a stronghold? That would be interesting. Now, what I'm willing to bet Anthema is talking about is, well, Fort Tarsus is gigantic, and it feels like we are so limited with how much of it we actually see. I mean, you fly around the fort enough times, you're like, wow, this is gigantic, and there are obviously layers upon layers to the fortress. Why are we only limited to this very small courtyard, the freelancer enclave, Matthias's laboratory, the bar, and of course the bazaar and the javelin launch bays? Now personally, I would love to see Fort Tarsus opened up more, and I'm willing to bet Christian's just spitballing this Fort Tarsus as a stronghold thing. But who knows what the future holds, right? Our next tweet comes from Mauricio Gonzalez, who asks, Christian, on the new version of the game, we'll have a new UI. The actual one is a bit slow and confusing. Christian says, yes, lots of work on the UI. The team is kicking ass. And to that, I have to say, thank God. Anthem's current UI is slanted, and it looks strange, and it really just doesn't make a lot of sense. I still feel like it needed a couple more months of development before it released, but it's kind of like, well, they had to make do with what they had, so I get it. Regardless, it is very good to hear that we're going to be getting new UI with 2.0, or at least that it's being tweaked and worked on. Kaiser Wilhelm 85 asks, The pirate and his launch rocket system looks great. Will you use PTS in the future to test the new stuff? To which Christian replied with a very simple, yes. That was always one thing that the Bioware team constantly said, yes, we're going to use the PTS, yes, we're going to use the PTS, when it was only ever really used on the Cataclysm and Ice Tide. Granted, those were two of Anthem's biggest updates, though it always felt like a little bit of an underused asset in my opinion. Our next tweet comes from another one of my regulars, Nylock, who tweets, Honestly, more than anything, I want Assurance's combat pace won't be slowed down at all, even for additional features. Christian replies, we know that the combat was a highlight of Anthem. We want to build on it, not start over. Next up is I'm Mr. Sprinkles, who tweets, really just want to hear about how the story experience is going to be improved. Should I expect it to take a backseat to gameplay? Will it be more passively told, or will there be more cutscenes and conversations? Are choices going to be involved? Stuff like that. Christian replied, not ditching the story, but we won't be able to sustain the content furnace that sin-heavy storytelling brings. I think the approach that we're taking is a really good alternative, and we'll share more in the future. Now, personally, this is probably the only thing that I'm not wild about, but I do get it. Cinematics take months upon months of work, and live service games maybe are lucky enough to have a couple of them made a season. Take Destiny, for example. They have a few cutscenes here and there, but it's not focused on cinematic storytelling. Rather, the storytelling is told through the missions or through dialogue with characters that are off screen over comms, for example. I'm hoping that Bioware will take a unique approach, though, and do Anthem's incredible lore and storytelling justice in traditional Bioware formatting. Our next tweet is from Firetop1993, who asks, What about new Javelin chassis? Christian replies, maybe, maybe something to share for next week. Not promising anything. Now guys, I have an upcoming video tomorrow discussing that brand new Javelin, and I think you're really going to like where it's going. So be sure to stick around for that. Next up is Ben Cedar, who tweets, Christian, one of the most frustrating things was hearing before the game was launched that the numbers on gear meant something. Will they mean something again? Do you see a character slash stats sheet being feasible? 
Christian replies, They will, and yes, we are working on two versions of an inventory slash stat screen. We have the more streamlined version stood up in-game and aligning on what the more detailed stat sheet will contain. One of the biggest turnoffs for me about Anthem was that it didn't have a dedicated stat sheet on launch. I mean, it's a looter shooter game with numbers and metrics and all sorts of things, and having to basically do that math in your head was not the greatest. Plus, it really devalued your gear, not knowing what exactly it did or what the numbers changed. Very glad to hear that we're going to be getting a brand new inventory and stat screen with Anthem 2.0. It's just a matter of time now, and I can't wait to see what it looks like. Next up, we have a tweet from Michael, who is another one of my regulars, who tweets, All information is greatly welcomed. But for me, I'd like more info on expanding lore slash campaign, new factions slash enemies, non-human NPC slash allies, new javelins, regions, endgame, parentheses raids, any info on any of this is so very appreciated. To which Christian throws a major curveball. Did not see this one coming. He tweets, non-human NPC slash allies, you're on to something. Now, Bioware traditionally does do this, where they have this alien faction that's possibly the enemies, maybe the Urgoth, and having some sort of ally with them. Though, we really don't know about any other species in Anthem. At least they're sentient and maybe willing to work with the humans. I mean, we've got the Scars and that's just about it. I mean, obviously we have the Chimeras, but last I checked they can't talk. Anyways, I might be reading too much into this, but cool. And lastly, we have a tweet from another one of my awesome regulars over on Twitter, Freelancer Damsia Sarki, who tweets, Hmm, new factions? How about the regions we'll explore? To which Christian tweets, More on regions soon. And we actually have a video on that with one of the new regions coming up very soon, so be sure to stick around for that. But anyways, freelancers, that's everything for this video. I'm sorry if it did end up running a little long, I'm about to go back and edit it and hopefully cut out a lot of stuff. But what are your thoughts on all of this? Are you glad that Bioware is talking with us again and giving us these sneak peeks behind the hood? And what do you want to see more of? Let me know in the comment section below, as I really do read through all of your comments, and I will reply if there's conversational potential, as always. As per the usual, I hope all of you fantastic freelancers have a phenomenal day, and I look forward to seeing each and every last one of you in the next video very soon. And remember, freelancers, we are strong alone, but we are so much stronger together.